When it comes to Star Trek films, the odd ones are normally not very good. However, this is the odd one out, because this isn't that bad. But we're not here to praise the film. Why? Because I'm Barry Man, and this is 10 Things Wrong With. Star Trek III The Search of Spock is a 1984 American science fiction film written and produced by Half Bennett and directed by Leonard Nimoy. After the events of the previous film, the Enterprise returns home, only to find out that there was a lot more going on on the Genesis planet than what they finally realised. However, they must break all the rules to return and also find their long dead friend. So when the film was released, um, it generally got positive reviews, but not as positive as the previous film. However, that doesn't mean it's still good, and there was lots of things wrong with the film. So let's find out 10 things wrong with Star Trek III The Search for Spock. Number 10, damage. The damage on the Enterprise as it returns to Earth is a lot more significant than what actually happened in the previous film. Granted, there was a lot of damage to the engineering section, but there was hardly any damage done to the warp nacelles or the saucer section, yet it does actually have damage on the saucer section and it does have damage on the warp nacelles. Why? This film is apparently takes place right after the previous film. And all the log says is they dropped off their training crew and picked up a new crew to go home. That's it. So you get the impression it's quite soon afterwards. However, there are some fan novels or um, novels as well that actually says the Enterprise had a fight with the Klingons, which is why Klingons are up in arms about the Genesis planet. And it adds a bit more to it, but we don't look at the books. We're just looking at what happened in the film. And yet yeah, the Enterprise miraculously had more damage. Number nine, outline. The Enterprise in the films and the Enterprise in the TV series, although it's the same ship that was rebuilt, it is significantly different. And one of the biggest difference is the warp nacelles. So in the original series, they were straight. In the films, they're angled. Now on Chekhov's display, they don't seem to have updated it because the display still has the straight nacelle struts. However, when the, film, when the Enterprise is actually escaping from space dock, the screen shows the angular warp nacelle struts. So why was Chekhov one actually wrong? It's a, you're showing the wrong Enterprise, you're showing the old Enterprise. Number eight, commendations. So when the Enterprise actually gets to Space Dock, they have a meeting with the Chief of Operations of Starfleet, who says they're all going to get Starfleet's higher commendations. Why? That doesn't actually really make sense, because when you look at the events of what happened in the previous film, a lot of it could have been avoided if Kirk had followed the rules, like, Savak actually told him that we have a ship approaching us with no communications. Rules say we put our shields up. Kirk didn't. And because of that decision, lots of people died and the ship was severely damaged because Kirk didn't follow the rules. And then he allows the Genesis device to get kidnapped and then he allows the Genesis device to get launched. Why are Starfleet praising him and giving him a commendation when he's caused a massive diplomatical issue. He would be penalized badly for that. But no, he didn't. He, they gave him a commendation for causing a lot of mess. Doesn't make sense. Number seven, the lady's age. In the same meeting, they're told the Enterprise is to be to get decommissioned because she's over 20 years old. No, she's not. She is actually 40 years old. She was launched in the year 2245, and this film is set in the year 2285. She is 40 years old. Now, going back to non-canon issues, the actual Constitution class starship was only designed to last for 18 years, so it could have meant that she's 20 years over her design date, but still, she's not 20, she's 40. She's an old lady. Treat her with a bit of respect, mate. Number six, Carol Marcus. Yeah, Carol Marcus is just gone from this film. Every reference has been removed because, let's face it, the Genesis planet was her baby. Wouldn't she be a part of the people to actually go and investigate the planet? Yeah, David being there makes sense, but wouldn't Carol be there as well? In fact, the whole tape about the Genesis project in that short amount of time between the films has been re-recorded by Admiral Kirk. 
why, where was Carol Marcus? That should have been in there as well. So yeah, it's like they just deleted Carol Marcus when she was such a big character in the previous film, it's just disappeared. Number five, short range scan. So after the Enterprise has been stolen, they get to the Genesis planet, the first thing they do is Kirk follows rules and does a short range scan and they can't find nothing. Why can't they find nothing? Because the USS Grissom was there, granted it had been blown up and it was in pieces, but they would have found the debris of that spaceship because it hadn't happened that long ago, so it would still be in proximity. So your sensors should have picked it up or were they still badly damaged? But yeah, the fact that you didn't see any damage or pick up any damage, you still were not doing your jobs properly. Number four, Klingons are weak. So in the original series, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Klingons are shown to have immense strength. Even in most of the films, they're really strong. Except in this film, because one of the Klingons gets killed by Spock throwing him. Now, we do know Spock does have some strength due to the gravitational uh, Vulcan being heavier than Earth, so Vulcans are generally stronger. But he only threw him. He didn't do anything else, he didn't punch him or anything. He threw him, Klingon's dead, or at least knocked unconscious. But a Klingon died by being thrown. Just let that sink in. A Klingon, one of the toughest SOBs out there, was killed by being thrown. Number three, self-destruction. So they got the self-destruction completely and utterly wrong. Now I know Industrial Light and Magic were not overly happy because when they got the script, they were over happy at blowing the Enterprise up because they hated the model to be told, nah, you can't blow the model up. So Industrial Light and Magic weren't overly happy, but what they did was visually awesome and it does tug at the heartstrings. However, it's still wrong. So when a starship initiates its self-destruct, the way it does it is it just basically puts all its matter and antimatter together to cause the explosion, which is in the warp core, which is in the engineering section. The self-destruct happens on the bridge and then the front of the saucer section just dissolves. No, that's not how self-destruct on a Federation starship works. Yes, I am a Trekkie, I know how it works. The explosion should have been from the engineering section, not the saucer section. I don't, I don't think they would have got the visual effects as good. They were impressive. Number two, one minute. Enter final code for one minute countdown. Kirk enters the code, 60 seconds. One minute, 45 seconds, the Enterprise blows up. What they should have actually done is actually said a two minute countdown because it would have made more sense because there is a gap in that 60 seconds uh, while they're going from the bridge to the transporter. So yeah, one minute, it took longer than that on screen and it didn't tally up, it didn't make sense. It's like Dragon Ball. Frieza says this planet's gonna blow up in five minutes, 30 minutes later it blows up. Number one, final fight. In the history of Star Trek, there are some absolute brilliant punch-ups. This is not one of them. In fact, this fight was so bad, it makes Kirk's fight against the Gorn, where he's like just moving really slowly like this, look impressive. Now, I know it was predominantly stuntmen, but yeah, the fight, it wasn't actually that good, and it was quite boring. I mean, granted Kirk wins, we all knew he was gonna win, but it was very lacklustre, not very exciting. Final thoughts. So yeah, once again, I've been a little bit nitpicky. Now this film isn't as good as Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. It was never gonna be that. However, this film does have a lot going for it. Out of all of the uh, like original six Star Trek films, this has the best model work. Without a doubt, the model work that ILM actually did was impressive, especially as they've got so many new ships. What was new? You had the Bird of Prey, the cargo ship, the Grissom, the Excelsior. These were all new models made for this film. They look all absolutely amazing. The shots they got of them were amazing. The, yeah, this, the model work, phenomenal. The soundtrack, once again, was absolutely amazing and it worked in this film. With that little touch of the next generation motion picture theme scattered throughout 
Once again, brilliant. What lets this film down is it is quite a naff story. There's not much to it. There's a lot, a lot of character development. Even for some of the minor characters, like Ahura and Sulu, you get inside their mindsets, and that's the first time we ever saw that. But the overall story isn't really good. However, it's good enough to keep the plot going. Every time I watch this film, I get welled up with the Enterprise. Because let's face it, even though it's a model, the Enterprise is the main character of Star Trek, and they killed her. Rest in peace, Enterprise. So let's get on to the rankings. Well, what am I going to rank it? It's got a lot of background side of things that are good, just let down by a naff story, really. So I'm actually going to give this a 7 out of 10 berries. But that's my opinion. What do you think? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know in the comments below. Now, we've done two weeks of sci-fi films, but we are going to do a third week of a sci-fi film. It's a film that I've been requested by people at work. They've asked me to do one. Okay, I will do one. Want to know what film I'm on about? Because it was based on a controversial book. There's an interesting clue. If you want to know what I mean? Come back next Sunday. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.